YouTube, what's going on? If you're new here, my name's Roger. I own a company called QVO Tactical where we make holsters and gear and also film content for this channel. In today's video, we are reviewing a new product from a company I'm proud to say has come a long way in such a short time. I'm talking about Flux Defense and their new Flux Raider brace and chassis for the Sig P320 lineup. Now you might remember a couple years back when I first met with the Flux Defense crew at SHOT Show. Uh, we ran into them on the showroom floor and they showed us their first product, the Flux Brace for the Glock platform. I'm happy to say that I was stoked for the product at first sight. A few of my friends thought it was gimmicky and didn't see the purpose or the problem that the product was solving. Um, with my background in law enforcement, I immediately saw a use for this for like plainclothes operations, for motors, uh, and even protection details. Uh, more on that later in the video though. Uh, anyway, the Flux crew saw my enthusiasm and gave us one for a review. Um, at the time, we only had maybe three to 5,000 subscribers. Our following was even smaller than it is currently. Uh, I'm happy to say though that we did a really good job with the video and the feedback from their customers, our audience, and the team themselves was great. Um, this led to us creating another video for them when the Flux Mag was released, and now we have the Flux Raider. Uh, we appreciate the guys over at Flux taking a chance with us in the early stages of our channel. As always guys, I like to give you full transparency about how we come across getting these products in for review. Um, like everyone else, I was scrolling on Instagram about a month ago when I saw the release of the new Flux Raider. I reached out to the Flux team via Instagram and asked how the launch was going. They responded telling me that they had already sold out, but they appreciated our support over the last few years and had one for me saved with my name on it. So I was stoked and they sent it over uh, to us free of charge so that we could make this video. Thank you to the Flux team and congrats with all the success in the last three years. Uh, it's been super cool to watch your company grow. Now, I do want to bring up something that is being heavily talked about in our industry at the moment. Um, for those of you that have been following our channel, you know that I always state how I get a product, whether it be an industry discount, uh, in exchange to create content, if I paid for it, a product trade, or simply free. I always like to disclose this. Um, I've gotten some comments in the last two years about how my reviews are always good and that I only review products that I like. To that, I say you are 100% correct about that. Um, for those who do not create content or understand the process behind it, uh, I'm going to give a quick little rundown on cost and time. You see, each video we produce costs around $600, which is mostly just the ammunition. Um, we normally like to shoot anywhere from 500 to 1,000 rounds, so that definitely costs money even more so right now. Um, now throw in the hours to write the talking points, film the in-studio portion like this, and then edit. Um, All together, we spend about $1,000 per video. So you can bet your ass that I'm only gonna spend my time and my money on products that I actually like and would actually buy. Um, if you don't see something on my channel, it's most likely because I didn't find interest in it. Um, I just wanted to put that out there because I've never been paid for a review and I don't think there's anything wrong with paid advertisement. And if and when we get to the audience base that would warrant paid reviews, we would actually consider them and nothing would change. Um, I'd still give full transparency that it is a paid review and I would still like have to actually like the product or want the product. So I've had a few unknown name um, optics companies recently reach out requesting reviews and we turn them down because they resemble optics used for airsoft or their poor quality, um, which I just have no interest in producing content for. Okay, so moving away from that sour note, let's get into the specs of the Flux Raider. The new MP17 Raider is designed to work with the SIG M17 or 18 and P320 series platforms. The unit itself is not a firearm. Um, it will require the six hour fire control unit. It's made from an injection molded polymer and features a new dual mag release. Um, it's got flared mag wells, two QD uh, sling positions, a higher Picatinny rail section for mounting optics, and now accepts larger diameter suppressors. Now, now, we received the brace version, which is designed and intended to be used as a pistol with one hand. How you choose to use it is your choice, and we too will use it in the way that we want to. If you're not familiar with what I'm talking about right now, then I think a little bit of research is in store for you on Google. Uh, let's move on to the why question. Why would you want this product, and what problem does it solve? Well, simply put, guys, it makes shooting easier. With the Flux Raider system, you get multiple points of contacts, which we all know aids in accuracy. Don't believe me? Shoot your AR pistol with and without a brace and tell me which is easier. Yeah, same say. 
Same, same, but different, but still same. Being able to hit a target consistently at distance with this setup is a breeze. For example, the intro for this video, after shooting those initial shots from the vehicle, uh, I stepped out and engaged a two thirds A zone target at 50 yards and then a full size A zone target at 115 yards. Having a setup like this Flux Raider definitely made these shots much easier than if I were just shooting the P320 by itself. Hey, oh, 115 yards, bro, told you. That's <laughs> nuts. Now for the next question, what problem does this solve? Uh, the same problem that setups like the MP7, the MP5, or even in some cases the AR pistol solve. Having something low profile on your person or concealed nearby that is going to aid in accuracy with multiple points of contact, more ammunition, some type of optic, and a weapon light. Um, now earlier in the video, I talked about the benefits of using the Flux product lineup from a law enforcement perspective. Uh, my first thought was plainclothes operations on the Las Vegas Strip. Um, when I worked the Strip area, my squad went out in a plainclothes capacity several times throughout the year and to me the flux raider setup inside a vertex transit sling would be the perfect secondary weapon platform uh, for working this type of detail uh, especially for an active shooter type scenario where i would want more rounds and more points of contact if having to search room to room inside a structure Next would be for motors. Um, I remember during my patrol days seeing other agencies rocking MP5s in their saddlebags. This gave the guys on motorcycles a secondary platform to run in case of situations where you wanted more than just your duty gun. Um, with how compact the Flux Raider is, I think this would be even better than the MP5 as it gives you all the same benefits, but with a much smaller package. Um, the last thing I thought of was protection details. I remembered watching the video on the President Reagan assassination attempt and seeing a Secret Service agent deploy an Uzi during that incident. Uh, I immediately thought of how easy it would be to both conceal and deploy the Flux Raider utilizing a single point sling with their QD positions. Um, I was able to conceal it under a button up flannel and a Vertex soft shell jacket with ease. Um, I used a single point bungee sling from Roan Industries to hold it in place under my armpit and found this to be a pretty solid setup. Now, you may have noticed that I have my Flux Raider equipped with a couple of really cool toys. One being the XVL2 IRC from Surefire and the SRO Red Dot from Trijicon. Uh, I then threw on the rugged Obsidian 9 suppressor and of course, we had to go dark. Now for this portion of the video, we filmed it using my Nikon Z50 that has the IR blocker removed. With this camera setup, you can see the IR illuminator and the IR laser from the Surefire XLV2. Uh, without it, you would just see pitch black because that's how dark it was out there in the desert when we filmed this portion. Now, I've always wanted an MP7, especially when I watch scenes like this one from SEAL Team CBS. To me, there's just something super cool about having a compact platform under night vision with IR capabilities. Um, also
also seeing how the Army went with the SIG, M uh, SIG M17 contract, I could definitely see the Flux Raider providing support for those troops downrange. Uh, now, before people start going off in the comments, we were just out in the desert having fun with our MVG 50s from AGM Global Vision. Um, guys, I don't operate. Uh, I've never used night vision devices when I was in law enforcement. Um, I did not even start to mess with night vision until I started reviewing content here on YouTube. Um, not that it matters as I still see the validity in the platform being used covertly, but I do want to put that disclaimer out there. Um, one other thing to note here, in order for my suppressor setup to run reliably, I did have to switch out to the DPM system springs. Um, they comes with three springs and the one that worked best for us was the shortest one. Okay, so let's talk about some of the other considerations for the Flux Raider. I remember a few times in my LE days when we had to conduct surveillance. Um, this was typically done for plainclothes narcotics transactions um, with the potential for violence to occur. Uh, with that being said, it's not the easiest platform to shoot from when you are in a seated position in a vehicle. Uh, I'm not saying it's impossible, but again, uh, I'll mention the multiple points of contact you get with the Flux Raider. This gives you a more stable platform, which makes the shooting position uh, much easier, especially when you can run a single point sling and use it to get tension on the weapon, uh, much like how I did here when shooting from my truck uh, while using the Roan Industries single point bungee sling. Now, for those of you out there that like to party, you can also run this with a compensator. Uh, I happen to have mine set up with a Norso slide and the dual port Parker Mount machine compensator. If you've seen our other videos on this compensator, then you definitely know it's a flat shooter. some other really cool features of the new Flux Raider. The first being the manual safety. I've had some people comment on their fear of trusting the SIG P320 platform due to previous documented issues. Uh, well, that fear is put to rest with the integrated manual safety on the Flux Raider. It is both ambidextrous and placed in the familiar thumb position, much like an AR-15. This makes slinging the setup or bagging it much safer in my opinion. Next up is the dual mag release. Uh, now this is a really cool feature. Behind the spare magazine is a button that if pressed all the way in will release the spare magazine and drop the empty one at the same time. For you guys out there that like to do the sub second reloads, well here you go. In addition to that, the Flux Raider has an index finger style mag release similar to an AR-15 uh, that drops the empty spare magazine as well as a thumb mag release like a traditional handgun. This is great for doing admin reloads or verifying how many rounds you still have left in your gun. Next up is the slide release. It is intuitively placed at the release lever for the brace. So it's dual features. It both releases the brace and drops the slide. Um, this allows you to instantly send the slide home when conducting a reload without having to use your support hand to rack the slide manually. Um, something to note here though, the release lever also releases the tension on the brace like I just said. So if you happen to be pressing your body against the brace at the same time you hit that slide release, the brace will collapse, sending that optic rushing towards your face. Ask me how I know. Lastly is the new Picatinny rail section that can be used to mount a variety of optics. Uh, we chose to go with the Trijicon SRO utilizing the Jaegerworks Battle Ready Optic Shield for added protection mounted with an American Defense QD low mount. This places the optic at the perfect height when getting a sight picture. Um, it's great because you don't have to do that whole turtle head thing that everybody's been doing to get a good uh, sight picture or acquire it. Um, you don't have to do that anymore. It may look a little awkward when you first look at the platform, but I thought the same thing about the Unity Tactical Fast Riser, um, all of those mounts until I use them. Now for me, it's really hard to use anything that's lower. There are two last things I wanna mention about the setup. Um, I removed my suppressor height sights from my slides since they will not work with the Flux Raider. In doing so, I wanted to find a way to create some type of charging handle similar to those used with open guns and competitions. The only difference is I wanted it to mount on to the slide through the front sight slot so that the setup had some type of forward, hard, uh, forward charging handle there in that position. Um, this is a prototype that we made with NRG Machining here in Vegas. We're looking at making another one that includes a front sight post and a set screw to prevent it from coming out. Um, the last thing to mention is with the Flux Raider is that you can remove the spring-loaded function of the brace. You can remove the Allen screw in the back and then by doing so you can make the brace deployable by simply pulling it out manually. This allows for a more covert and quiet deployment and prevents anything from getting in the way because now you're just pulling it out instead of it shooting out on its own. Um, this would be very similar to like an MP5 collapsible brace or stock or any other PDW setup.
Well guys, that is going to do it for our review of the Flux Raider from Flux Defense. Uh, my goal for this video was to showcase all of the different applications that I find this setup to be beneficial for. Um, I hope that it resonated with a lot of you out there. My experience with this industry has been that there is not a lot of acceptance to newer products, especially ones that are developed when thinking outside of the box. I know that during my LE career, not a lot of innovation was accepted policy-wise when it came to new gear getting approved for the department. Uh, I'm hoping that with content like this, more people will start to see the real world application of the Flux Raider and its sister products. I definitely think that Flux Defense is getting the ball rolling with decision makers in the industry seeing the value in products like this, but I also think at the same time, there's a long road ahead. Um, for example, to this day, I still know guys who will not carry a Glock because it's a plastic gun. Um, they only carry metal frame handguns. It's mentalities like this that are hard to get through to. Um, Glock has been around for decades and it has its, it's got proven reliability much like other polymer striker fired guns on the market, but this is still something that people debate. Anyway guys, I appreciate you all checking out the video and I look forward to hearing your constructive feedback down below in the comments. Um, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up down below and if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing because we post new videos every week. If you wanna support our content, check out that Patreon link down below. Um, our Patreon members get first access to new content, new gear, special discounts, codes, giveaways. They are a huge reason why we can keep creating these videos and we thank them. Thank you guys for watching and as always, I will see you in the next video. I missed the safety. <laughs> I forgot. I'm not used to Hit the wrong button first. It helps if I hit the target. <laughs>